let's weigh in on this megafauna, the late Pleistocene megafauna extinction event. S plural, because there were a number of megafauna organisms that went extinct. We're going to consider the evidence because that's what we do. And note to self that whenever there's new evidence, then we reconsider everything. We reconsider the conclusion that we arrive at in light of that new evidence. But as far as I know, here's how it is. Here's the overview of what we're going to go through. The mega size of the megafauna down here in the bottom left. Why were they so huge? Oh, it clicked into it by itself, of its own accord. Let's just go into it. So mega size, why were megafauna so massive? The first reason is Bergman's rule. It's a biogeographic rule. Pretty much a rule that informs ecologists and how they think. What is Bergman's rule? It is simply put, the bigger an organism is, the more heat it can conserve because the less surface area per unit volume of organism it has exposed to the cold external conditions. Was that simple? I think that was simple. Bergman's rule, done. Second reason megafauna were so mega was to avoid being eaten by other organisms. Predation evasion. There comes a point when, as an individual megafauna is growing up, it crosses a threshold where predators, like the saber-toothed tiger, this guy with the fangs, he was huge. There comes a point where not even he can take you down because you've, you've crossed that critical threshold a critical mass threshold, and you've become so massive that the saber tooth cat can't even take you down. You can even think about this, like the African savanna nowadays. A pride of lions who tries to take down a bull elephant, they'd want to be fairly bold, and they'd want to be fairly starving, because the risk to reward is very heavily weighted in the risk direction. A bull elephant, that guy is huge. Let's go in for the two competing hypotheses. There are two fighters in the ring. Who are they? First fighter, please. Over chill. This, simply put, is there came a point during the megafauna reign over the globe where the climate became unusually cold and this wiped the megafauna out. That's the gist of it. What's the gist of overkill? The second fighter in the ring, humans are the main driver of the late Pleistocene megafauna extinctions. That's the gist of overkill. Okay, so we've gone through the evidence or the reason why megafauna are so huge. The two competing hypotheses, the two fighters in the ring. Let's piece the puzzle together now. Mega size to withstand cold and to evade predation. But the two fighters in the ring to withstand cold, overchill. If megafauna grew to such massive size, specifically to deal with the cold, over chill doesn't really make sense. And to evade predation, you're trying to tell me they were predated upon, overly predated upon. That's what the overkill hypothesis is. But they evolved massive size also specifically to avoid being consumed by other organisms. So that doesn't make sense. However, humans are different beast we are a uniquely unique species in that we have taken cultural evolution to the extreme and so the megafauna may have evolved genetic means to avoid predation their massive size but humans because they're genetically limited they they overcome those genetic limitations through cultural means and technological innovations so what humans do is make spears to throw at these massive beasts and these massive beasts were behaviorally defenseless against humans humans would have encountered these massive beasts in say the americas where humans when humans first crossed the bering strait into the americas megafauna never saw a human before so they didn't think it was a, th a threat so oh god the humans just stood there darting them with spears and just taking them out and why wouldn't they megafauna were such a bounty if you, took, if you could take them down, they're so huge, they're so full of calories, that for our starving hunter-gatherers, our starving hunter-gatherer ancestors, they will have only been too happy to take down 
the megafauna and consume them as a means to survive. There's that asymmetry in hunting power because the megafauna are limited to genetic means of evolution, whereas humans sort of have risen above the genetic fray and can take advantage of cultural evolution, which is far faster, way faster. So the, the megafauna, they just had no hope. So now let's summarize. Overchill doesn't make sense. The megafauna evolved massive size to withstand the cold. You'd want to see in the geological record an abnormally cold period of time that lasted many, many seasons. And there'd be certain, you, you could make certain predictions. Like if it was abnormally cold, an abnormally cold climate that lasted for an abnormally long amount of time, then you'd see pretty much all organisms above a certain mass or weight die off because they can't regulate their temperature in this way too cold environment. On the other hand, overkill does make sense. And one of the another piece of evidence that we can add into the picture here is that megafauna extinctions on some of the continents, like the Americas, perfectly correlates with the expansion of humans into that geographic frontier. And a final piece of the puzzle, at the time that this debate first sort of emerged, the Clementian Climax model was featured heavily in the scientific paradigm. And in that model, biological organisms don't play as big a role in determining vegetation composition as do geological forces like earthquakes and volcanoes and even wildfires. So megafauna, we're kind of pushed aside and not considered. Secondly, it was politically incorrect because during the 1970s and 80s, there were media pieces like film, films and articles created about the deforestation of the Amazon and the likes. And these media portrayed the indigenous peoples of these places as living in harmony with nature. And so it was politically incorrect to sort of attribute blame to the ancestors of those indigenous peoples for wiping out the megafauna species. It was out of kilter with the times. And perhaps it still is. But there you have it, the weight of the evidence, at least as I see it, suggests that overkill holds more explanatory power than does overchill.